Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the uh, WGA strike again because this is what everybody's talking about, including comic book resources that for some reason is taking the position that uh, all of us nasty YouTubers are anti-union. Oh. Well, that when I saw who wrote it, Joshy here, Joshy's had a problem with YouTubers for a while now, and basically I think he's just mad that they're eating his lunch. Um, and yeah. he's constantly make, taking pot yeah. shots at YouTubers. And don't you know, because they that were amateur critics, unlike him, who's a professional critic, even though I would guarantee we probably have as, have as much uh, journalism background as he does. You probably more because you worked as an editor multiple places. I was working as a newspaper editor back in the 90s. Right, like, but you I know, hey, so Josh, he thinks we're all amateur critics because okay. he's, he's, the, he's the authority. Um, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the misconceptions about what we've been saying. Yes. And it's being misconstrued across many different places because you don't agree 100%, somehow you're anti. Even so, though you agree with most of what they said. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this. We'll give our thoughts kind of throughout the article. And, and this is a, uh, look, this is a much bigger issue. We've made ourselves, I thought we made ourselves and our positions very, very clear. Uh, we have said before that in regards to the strike, we do agree that the writers have been shortchanged in regards to residuals. Oh, that's been ongoing. AI, we agree with them on AI. Absolutely. Um, it is a problem, but... But um, some of the other asks, like we need to have X number of people in the writer's room or we have to keep people employed that that don't frankly have a, a reason to be there. That is not that is not realistic. Right. They some reason think that even though the market has shrunk considerably, that all the writers that are there should stay employed. It's like back in 2008 when the last strike happened, it was a completely different time. Yeah. All the streaming services and things have come into play since then. Now we have the streaming wars. So now there's so much competition. The, the big places like Netflix and, and Disney and HBO and all that, they cannot sustain, so they have to shrink. And yes, in order to yes. shrink, that means that everything gets, there's less, there's less shows, there's fewer positions. That's just the way it is. You can't cut something in half and then say, yes, but everybody, the whole thing has to be in, fit in that half. It doesn't work that way. That's not how economics works. Basic economics, you can't take a pie. You can either have a pie with uh, four nice size slices, or you can take that same pie, the pie's not gonna get bigger, and you can chop it up into 32 pieces, it's barely a taste. And if you wanna keep everybody employed in this market, uh, you're gonna have a bunch of people not making that much money because it's just not there to give them. Right, that's the I mean, that's, that's your option. That's Either. the reality, I'm sorry, I didn't make the rules. That's the, how it The works. ones that bring it stay employed, or the ones that bring it, and the ones that don't do, and then everybody gets less to, to you know, like you said, was a Batman that if he gave up all his money to Gotham? Yeah, everybody get like a stimulus check for like a hundred bucks or something, and then that then the city burned down because there's no Batman. Right, to right. Protect so them. you know, hey. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna talk here about this lovely piece of uh, journalism in quotes that the WGA strike is a fight against everything fandoms claim to hate. Not, not really. No, not really. No, the, the, not really. This is look. There, there are people there taking a contrary position just to take a contrary position because they hate YouTubers. They hate YouTubers like us. They're crazy jealous of us. I know. I know. Hey, Josh. I know. Anthony. Bob. Oh yeah, hey Bob. Hey Bob. Hey Bob. Can't wait to you know, take this video and, and, and read over it. <laughs> so look, I know these guys and they're all talking. There's discords out there. There's like a whole group of people that are like anti-comics gate, anti-YouTuber, anti-whatever. And basically their whole shtick is they want to take the anti-position because they know their time is limited. Uh, you know, CBR at some point is probably going to shut down or streamline. A lot of people have gotten laid off from a lot of these websites. It is what it is. And again, this is this goes back to the pie, you know, not increasing in size in Hollywood either. It's the same thing. Little nitpick here. Joshua had a huge meltdown about things being marked opinion or whatever. This is listed as a TV feature. Oh, is it that guy? That guy. This oh. is a feature. Okay. So wouldn't that imply that it's true? But it's not. All right. So let's, <laughs> it sounds like a Joshua's opinion. Well, let's, let's go through this. And again, you know, we're going to reiterate our, our uh, position on the writer's strike. Uh, there are some things I agree with, absolutely. But I'm also a realist. And I know that you're not going to get everything you're asking for. I'm pointing for. out the obvious. Like apparently makes you the, the sole reason why you're a hater and everything's not going to work. All right, guys. So the WGA strike is a fight against everything fandoms claim to hate. 
some vocal fandoms aren't supporting the writer's strike, which is baffling because the writers are fighting against everything fans claim to not hate. Not really. Not not really at all. Because what the fans claim to hate are these really shitty shows with really poor writing and agenda-driven bullshit uh, that ruin franchises or just ruin shows in general. And um, those writers think they should be given not just more jobs. They should be in writing rooms even when there's no room for them and they should be paid more. So no, not really. Uh, no, yeah, because what, what I'm in favor of is the market correcting and creating entertainment that uh, you know at least stays on brand for you know the various brands which a lot of these activist writers have have taken these brands down totally different paths but look at who they're tossing overboard first it's the uh Victoria Alonzos it's the Ava DuVernay's you know they're mm -hmm. the ones who are getting gone first and this is absolutely Hollywood taking a good hard look at everything they've done for the last eight or so years and being like you know what we can't keep going like this. The money's not there. We're actively driving customers away. We gotta. We, we have gotta, to. We have to shrink. So who, yeah. who are we gonna get rid of? Of course, you're gonna get rid of the people that aren't bringing it first. That's given. Now that all the diverse people, no, hell no. But there's a lot of people that are activist minded that tend to, you know, cost the studios money. Um. Yeah. And again, look at who's getting tossed overboard first. Um. They said that this is about uh, fixing everything contentious fandoms claim to hate. Faced with the choice between David Zaslav and the DC Universe, what fan would side with the guy who paid himself nearly three times the budget of the canceled Batgirl? Batgirl was supposedly so bad it was brand damaging, okay, that they canceled it rather than release it and have the DC Universe have the, the taint a bad girl. That's how bad it was. But people, most fans aren't agreeing with David Zaslav anyway. He's still bringing the flash out. I mean, it, yeah, right? I mean, look, if you're going to be... They can choose there, Joshua. If you're going to be outraged, be outraged that Ezra Miller, someone who has been in the, the media for two years for allegations of grooming and assaulting and stealing and all kinds yeah, of... Some, some of them actually file claims. Yeah, a lot of uh, illegal behavior, right? I mean, massive track record of uh, potentially uh, illegal behavior, right? Um, that person still gets to to have their movie come out. And not only is the movie coming out, but they're spending mega bucks to to promote it right mm -hmm. more than they've spent on any movie in a long time but they want to make their money back and they're banking on people going for michael keaton right pretty much so unfortunately thanks to how profitable outrage is on youtube and social media some are doing just that right. no that's not what we're saying at all but you know whatever look oh yeah, these ads. yeah look at all the ads look at these ads josh where do you think the, this is what i'm talking about when i say that, that these people how don't profitable cbr uh, not very, very. I, I understand they were only. But they post these stories for for clicks, right? Yes. The, the point is to get people to 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 watch or to read what you say. Yeah. That I mean like articles like the clickbait article like this, Josh. I mean you know like that. So many. How, pro how profitable outrage is to get them to read your article so that you get attention. I mean like that, Josh. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought, Josh. Yeah. Okay, so. Because everything from Star Wars to genre TV staples like The Flash on the CW. These are The Flash and the CW. Not because anybody cares about The Flash and the CW. Because he wants to get The Flash in the article. See what he did there? Anyway, um, they're talking about the cries of viewers as bad writing. That's with writers uh, asking for fair pay, better job security, and, and other fundamental worker rights. The bad writing chorus on the side of the studios. No, Josh. No, Josh. That's not what we said, actually. Let's take each one of these things. Fair pay. Said repeatedly. Totally think that the writers that perform well and actually do their job well deserve fair pay. Yeah. Said that they even deserve bonuses for exceptional uh, performance on a show. When the show does really well because yes. it's a really good show and people love it, we completely believe they should get bonuses for that kind of uh, writing. Job security. Job security. Because you mean the gig jobs that Hollywood has, has always been gig jobs? You're hired for a series. You're hired for, you know, a season. You're hired for guest spots. You're hired for whatever. You're just, you're not guaranteed a nine to five, like you said, factory job. No. Just because you show up to work. That's not how Hollywood is. It has not been that way for a long time. Has it ever been that way? And it's never really been that way, except unless you work as as like an accountant or something in the studio, or, right? They have some writers that have like long-term deals. Yeah. But they're like the big ones that actually perform. Well, and even those can be walked back. Again, you know, I talked about Ava DuVernay. She had a massive deal with, I think it was Warner Brothers, and they cut her loose. You know, J.J. Abrams had this massive deal, too. I don't remember. I think they were pretty pissed off about it. I don't know if they canceled it, if they could cancel it or not. But, but like, Warner Brothers gave him a ton of money, and he went and immediately started doing work for the competition. And they gave him, like, a half a billion dollars. And he turned around, and he was like sidelining all the Warner Brothers work and going and doing a bunch of stuff for Apple yeah, and Disney. Yeah, with and all the money. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
their fun and other fundamental workers' rights. What other fundamental workers' rights? I mean, the demands that if they only have enough room for five writers, they should hire 12 because seven people should be paid at the higher rate to be there just because they worked as a writer before? So, yeah, the reason, look, and this is this all goes back to the economics, right? This is the market correcting. The reason I believe we have so much subpar writing in Hollywood isn't because the writers that are there are underpaid. It's because there are too many that don't have the talent and there are too many shows and, uh, you know, basically shows and writers are being kept on when they don't perform and um, they want... Because of outrage. Because of outrage. Yeah, same outrage you want to complain about, but on the opposite side. And that is a that is a big sticking point here for the... Again, we can agree with a lot of things with the, the strike because um, I do believe the studios play hokey pokey with the numbers to make sure that people don't get their streaming royalties and all that. I, I do agree with that, but they also need to realize fewer people are watching these shows for the most part than we're watching like the Cosby show or Seinfeld years and years ago. It's right. totally different. Well, the problem is because since the last strike, the streaming, streaming has made like so many more openings. So you have way more writers than you had back then. Yes. And now streaming because of the streaming wars is shrinking and because it's shrinking and they have to cancel shows, that means there are less writers that can be hired, less everybody else that can be hired as well. And then we have directors coming and then the actors coming too. They're going to probably strike. So you yeah, a studio, how much are they supposed to give you compared to everybody else? You have the, the best answer is when well, you have to get rid of what you get rid of, you keep the best the best ones that do their job, do it well, and you pay those people well and reward them well. Any business that closes down, like we have five branches and we close down three of them because the economy doesn't support five branches. You don't say that three people being laid off all get to come to the last two branches and you know work when there's nothing for them to do. Just because they worked there before. That's not how that's not how this works. That's all we've pointed out. It's not it's not, you know, being mean or fundamental workers' rights. I also said residuals need to be fixed repeatedly. Yes, because it, it's not consistent. If you're working on something like and I'm sure the Stranger Things guys, Duffer Brothers, I'm sure they get paid very, very well. But you know, if you have a show that suddenly becomes a hit a lot of times, and we saw this with, you know, the Bill Nye situation, which we actually agreed with Bill Nye, believe it or not, we agreed with Bill Nye because Disney used a loophole to not give him residuals. Yes. You know, and they've been doing that. And that was part of the problem with Scarlett Johansson, too, was they were trying to use a loophole to get away with, uh, you know, not paying residuals. But again, the main point here is all these people want to keep their jobs and there just aren't going to be enough jobs for everybody. I'm well, sorry. The, these folks also frequently being blame studios or individual producers, executives like Star Wars, Kathleen Kennedy. Who else are you going to blame there, Joshua? Because <laughs> it's, her it's, it's her on her. The stuff yes. didn't do well. It was on her. Even people who liked the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi by the rise of Skywalker, they're like, oh shit, everybody's right. There was no plan. What the hell was Kathleen Kennedy doing? So uh, Marvel visual effects go to hell. Everybody's complaining. What did Disney do? Oh, they fired the woman that was in charge of the visual effects. Right, right. They fired her. I think they probably fired her for other reasons. I think because her activism was a problem, but she was the point of contact. They got rid of her. But, but wait, this is right after... You, you're not blaming David Zaslav for the DC Universe for because he canceled Batgirl, but it's but how dare you blame Kathleen Kennedy? What it's like you know, it? do you want to do you want to pull it during dumbassery? I'm just trying to understand. Look, I these people get paid like three to ten dollars an article, I think, on CBR. That's that's what I heard I'm last sure, time. I don't know. I I, I just I, I don't understand this whole like this is like become a, a little a, a cottage industry here where we've got uh, journalists and Twitter people who I don't I don't believe actually work in the real world and people that are like working retail and wishing they could be in Hollywood uh taking YouTubers to task in some cases the YouTubers actually do have familiarity with Hollywood there are mm -hmm. some YouTubers on the wrong side that actually uh, you know either worked in Hollywood or worked around Hollywood or have Holly actual Hollywood connections and they're going to take a contrary position just because and it's not it's not going to work. Putting aside whether the writing is bad or whether some folks just don't like it. Fandoms should support the WJ, WGA strike. Why are you saying we don't? Because the only thing that we said was the demand to hot, keep people employed when there isn't jobs for them is, is too, going too far. But a lot of the other stuff that they're saying, yeah, that's probably okay. What part of that? Where is the, how is that? How is that? You know, it, it's not. You're just picking one thing. Uh, let's see, putting aside the profit motive of perpetual fan outrage, unlike CBR and the Mary Sue and all these other sites that, that went on and on about The Last Jedi and owning the Chuds and Rose Tico for God knows how many years. 
Trust me, if we wanted to be more profitable on YouTube, uh, talking about this nerd shit and the business side of nerd shit is literally like one of the last things well, we'd be if we doing. wanted to be more profitable and clickbaity, we'd just be like CBR. We'd be like CBR. Oh, wait, minus the profit part. Minus the profit part. Um, go down. Get, get, go on. What else? Is they, this is this? Uh, Ensuring every character in every universe gets a story. They're not... This, wait, 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 wait. Can't, you can't. It, does, it doesn't matter if it's profitable. We have to ensure that all these characters get stories, and that's why fans should agree. Well, the thing is, no one's going to have stories if the businesses go under because you're making stupid choices. Congratulations. We've got 20 writers working on a show that 20 people are going to watch. And then we had to green light 20 more shows with the same shitty production values because we can't afford to do any one show right because there are too many people working here. That are, aren't even qualified. No. And then, you know, ask comics how that's worked for them. Yeah. Anyway, but you know more than us, Josh, because you're you're a professional critic. Okay. Um, they're talking about Harry, the idea from the outside. Warner Brothers' idea to reboot Harry Potter as a TV series seems like a cash grab. It is probably. But it's yeah. also it's also a correct like look. J.K. Rowling was behind this, and she has said for years that she did not like that a lot of her books got. You know, stuff got cut. This entire article was just, but it's like we put the flash in there unrelated to the movie. Zaslav, it, it's writer strike. Now, J.K. Rowling transphobic. There, it's, just, it's just a bunch. This whole thing is Joshua crafting as many buzzwords as he can into an article masquerading as news to get clicks. Um, because but then calling everybody else out for doing the same thing. They get they get paid for view bonuses over there at Valnet. That's that's how it works. Mm -hmm. So they get like a base pay. So Potter Kettle, Josh. Pot Potter Kettle. Pot, yo, pot potter or kettle? Ke potter oh. kettle. I prefer kettle because I'm scree I'm screechy. Screechy. Mm -hmm. Screechy darkles. It makes more sense if I'm the kettle. <laughs> you could be the pot. The oh pot God. Fun. So yeah, I'm just like they're uh, look, they're trying to make a case for if if your writers and your workers are happier, they're gonna make better stuff and whatever. And but the, the, the like I don't understand why is this so hard to understand? You have to have money to make any of this shit and the shit's expensive and they're, they're not going to take as many chances anyway, because again, the reason they're doing Harry Potter is Warner brothers needs money. They know fantastic beast isn't bringing it, but they're like, yeah, we know Harry Potter. The theme park is very popular. We know Hogwarts legacy sold a shit. Ton. Thanks to journalists like Joshua. Thanks to Good job, Joshua. You sold that. You sold the hell out yeah, of yeah, People thanks, like you. Thanks to journalists, you know, rallying against this game. It sold a shit ton. And they know it's bankable and also J.K. Rowling. I'm going to be honest. Her personality type, she's probably like, fuck Daniel Radcliffe and fuck Emma Watson. We're going to recast him. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah, they're going to recast him because they have to recast him. Yeah, Mimic. yeah. So he comes to the point that actually is our one sticking point with the strike. Um, because it just doesn't make sense, frankly. One of the most contentious proposals from the WGA is that shows would be required to hire a set number of writers, even if the showrunner runs to write all the scripts themselves. This is not a new phenomenon. No one said it was. Actually, the West Wing executive producer Aaron Sorkin wrote most scripts himself and, and, instead of allowing other writers in the room to tackle them. Yet in most cases, an executive producer would likely take advantage of the writers they required to hire. Bullshit. What this is about is you're going to get, you need to get rid of like a half your writers and to keep those writers employed, we're going to demand that there are minimums in the writer's room because they said that. They even said that in some of the comments to make sure writers stay employed. Set at the new whatever rage, wages are, which, by the way, the, rate, the rates aren't low. Like, they're making it out like they don't get paid shit, and that's not true. Um, maybe some people that are grunts, maybe. But for most people, especially the big ones, that's not true. No, it's, it's actually it's pretty high. Again, you're living in, in L.A., but it's, you know, compared that's a choice. to... Compare, yeah, it is a choice, but compared to the rest of the country, they're getting paid pretty well. Right. Yeah. So they're like, they're, they're mad about that. That is that is our literal only major issue. That it, it pretty much is, is our big sticking point is the demands about that. So we're, we're going to see a lot of this, I think. And this is, um, and I think a lot, look, I'm going to be truthful here. I think what's going on is a lot of the people who write for these nerd outlets, a lot of the people who do the anti anti YouTuber videos or anti whatever nerd videos, a lot of them, if you really look into it, they have Hollywood aspirations themselves or they're journalists and they know they're in the same boat that a lot of these writers are and writers are, you know, coming under fire because there are alternatives now and uh, AI is not ideal, but eventually it's going to become part of the tool set, just like Microsoft Word and spell check and Grammarly and all that stuff, it, it, it's going to happen, which means that most outlets and most writing rooms are going to need fewer people 
helping the people that actually do the work get the work mm-hmm. done. Because even in you know sites like CBR, I'm sure they have a lot of writers that aren't bringing it, but they're still getting paid, but they're not bringing it, mm-hmm. and they could unless they resort to clickbait, which they could yeah, use everybody yeah. else of. Well, we're talking about too. Like, this this one's funny. Another reason some stories may feel rush, this is excuses or haphazard, is because the writers simply don't have time to do the job. A writer might work a few weeks on a six episode series, and yet instead of focusing fully on the work that for their gig job, they're being asked to do unpaid rewrites for the last job. Boss. Well, that sounds like you didn't do what right the first time, and they're looking for the next gig, so they continue to pay bills. Welcome to the real world, Joshua. I, I am failing to understand because look, you're working marketing. Yes, I did. I worked in marketing. I worked as a journalist. I worked as a freelancer for a variety of things, web development, comics, you name it. You are, if you are working in any creative industry. A freelancer even. This is basically what this is, gig economy freelance. You are, in most cases, a lot of these people have their own businesses set up because you are just like a plumber. You're like the plumber who Wait, it gets cleans worse, the though. pipes of Hollywood. It gets worse though, Tom. <laughs> even worse. Get your tears on. Ready? Okay. Even worse, some TV writers have to resort to taking non-writing jobs to make ends meet. I mean, nobody else outside of writers understand that at all, ever. Oh, for fuck's sake. There are people out there working like three jobs just to make sure they don't lose their house. This is, this is like, look, this is a, this is a trope, right? You move to LA, you bus tables, and then you go to your auditions, become an actor, and same with writing. All of it. You moved to New York when when I wanted to break into comics. It you know back in like the nineties, you were supposed to move to New York, work some crap job, live in some apartment with like six other people until you got your big break working for Marvel or DC or whatever. And then even then, you weren't going to make enough right out of the gate, or weren't going to have enough work for it to be consistent to quit your other job. So you're going to be like busting tables and drawing Spider Man until you get to a point where you're actually you know, making pretty good money. That is understood in any creative industry. But I not mean, just that. People do just work regular jobs. There are teachers out there working side jobs and things like that just to make sure they get through the summer or make ends meet. Bullshit. This is not a, just a you problem. There is, uh, well, yeah, there's one teacher, and I'm not going to go into too much detail from one of our kids' schools that actually works at a grocery store, too, because they're not getting paid enough. You yeah. Know? And so, so I'm yeah, just like, I mean, it's, it's just not, it's, it's just not, it's just, it's just unsustainable for them. But it will result in displeased fan and broken franchises. So them doing this shitty job, because they're hired for a job for several weeks, but they still might have to do stuff from the other job that they took, and like most freelancers, and they they might have to actually go like work for Uber or something because you know they can't afford to just live off of you know in between and stuff like that, which pretty much a lot of people face the same problems. Yeah, yeah. that's why the franchises suck. So the answer is to take more writers who aren't doing their job and to keep them employed. How does that make that better? I'm so, trying to understand the same situation again. So let me let me tell you a little story here. I'm gonna make it all about myself because you know why not? I need a drink. All I have is coffee. Okay, get get caffeined up. We need more of that uh, geeky energy here. So when I worked in comics, when I started working in comics, I always had a day job. I always had a day job. And I finally broke into comics, and I did. And we were doing f- a full full amount of work in a week. It was 40, 50 hours a week in comics and then 40 hours a week at a day job. And then a lot of times we go to conventions on the weekend and Geeky would be working on uh, making convention stuff. So I had we, my little sweatshop going on. Yeah. It was very unfun. And we had our convention schedule. And this was, I mean, a long time, you know, it was probably about almost 10 years ago, but it was hard. And we did both because one, we love comics. And two, we also needed the extra money because the day job was okay. But, you know, we we are in a different position than a lot of these people where we have a family and a mortgage and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, we always did what we had to do. We always did what we had to do. And sometimes your your creative aspirations take a back seat. I remember you know? even when you were doing comics and you work full time and you're actually doing print comics. They were like having you pull all nighters a couple of days because of I did. because somebody flaked out on their end and didn't do their job on their end. You had to do over like a pull all nighters to get stuff done because their person ba- bailed or something. And is that ideal? No, but the flip side is I knew exactly what I was signing up for. I didn't sign up to do all nighters like that, but I also knew if I didn't do it, there were thirty other people in line behind mm-hmm. me that would do it. And they would work for that. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying saying any of this stuff is right. I'm saying this is the reality. This is the. That's the difference. The economic reality is, and this is why everybody's going on strike at the same time to try to be in lockstep. But even, even, 
if Hollywood tomorrow said, hey, you know what, we're not working with anybody in the union at all, they would go outside of the unions and they would go outside. And they, they've done it. I know Netflix has done it. Um, Rooster Teeth did it with Transformers. They went out and they hired non-union voice actors, which was a huge deal because people were pissed off. They didn't have, you know, Peter Cullen coming back as Optimus. But they did it because they have the money to pay well, them. Unions are good when they're working for actual fair labor practices. The fair problem labor, yeah. becomes, like we saw with, was it Image? Yeah. That the, the, the office well, staff comments, yeah. thought they should they should have the final say on what books got printed when their job was to be like, you know, some pre-press or, or secretarial or something that, that they should have the ultimate say. That was one of their union demands. When you had me with, uh, you know, it's written, you know, in writing what your duties were so that you weren't doing more work than you should, agree with you. Yep. More money, maybe agree with you. Uh, you know, better hours, agree with you. The problem was when you start making these ridiculous demands. And that is the case here. Anyway, he goes on, because don't you know, we're amateur critics. While some amateur critics, unlike Joshua here in CBR, um, may make their names decrying the bad writing in their favorite franchises, while Josh goes on CBR constantly making articles about his opinions on things and how he doesn't like YouTubers. Yeah. Potato, potato. Yeah, you still right. the pot. Um, they should su still support the WGA strike because... But then again, then again why, why, why are we not? Like, just saying we disagree with a couple points... But we agree with the majority of it. Yeah. So here's here's the thing, because since since we started doing all the different stuff we do, we we own. We're not, I'm not going to go into detail of what we do exactly, but we own multiple businesses. We have employees all over the place doing different things. Right now, I'm going to tell you, as a boss, uh, you know, and these companies are, you know, yeah, they had record profits during the pandemic, but we're seeing a massive decline in you know subscriber numbers and revenue. They're canceling shows. They're canceling shows before the strike. You never ask your boss for a raise when things are bad because you put a huge target on yourself. If it were me and somebody came to me with all these demands and said, not only do you have to pay me more, but you have to hire 20 of my friends, I would look at my bank account and be like, I can't afford it. So I guess I'm going to have to let you all go or cancel this project because I can't afford to pay you all. I'm right. sorry. You know, I'm sorry. But the reality is, you know, there's a reality here, too, that they're not focused on. Well, because the CEO makes so much money. If you look at the pays, a lot of them have shrunk considerably yeah. because they're cutting and they're shrinking down because there is a stupid streaming war going on. And a lot of shows that they're putting all this money into do not perform because they went listen to people on Twitter, people like Joshua. You know what I'm not seeing? And there, there, this is a huge difference between the 2008 writer strike and current year. Back then, the writers knew they were going to be out of work for a couple months, and they were finding creative, inventive ways to make money and keep themselves busy. Um, I'm not seeing that now. All I'm seeing now is, I mean, there, there probably are some. I'm, I'm guessing the older writers probably are like, oh, yeah, we've been down this road you know, before. You're telling me there's an article where they're Oh, yeah. The, the, right, the one that was an anonymous writer talking about how most people are sitting at the thing trying to chat with old friends or hook up for sex. So that's what they're doing with their downtime, right? Um, and look, this isn't their first rodeo, but I think a lot of the people now that are complaining the loudest are the newer writers that were brought in during the streaming era. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of them I don't think have the, the skill set to go do anything else. Well, the ones that didn't didn't research characters, they just made it done their own OCs yeah. or themselves and then didn't understand why they didn't do well. But, but during the last writer's strike, we had websites... Uh, pop up. Uh, I think College Humor, Funny or Die, a bunch of, because a lot of these guys were, they were, you know, off for months. And they're like, hey, um, we're not going to take a line down. We're going to go do some stuff. We're going to do some writing, whatever. But but these new writers, like, I don't think they have the skills. Instead, they're going to go out to Twitter and piss and moan and bitch, and they could be making stuff and having a backup plan, but they, they're not doing that. You know, I don't see that happening. Not like it was back then. Um, I'm sorry, but this guy's, he just really has a hate boner for Zazlav. I mean, really, really has a hate bone for Zaslav and YouTubers. Oh, it's because, look, if it's a political thing, it's probably because Zaslav brought Trump on the CNN and was like record ratings. Oh, I don't even know. You know? I don't even <laughs> care. I didn't even watch it. But, you know, one thing that, that was in the other article a lot of people are mentioning, and you brought this Judd Ap Apatow up too. The studios probably, you know, I'm not saying the studios are innocent in this at all. No. The studios... You know, they can work with them. They just are choosing not to. And like, but a lot of people are saying the same thing. And I, I don't disagree. They know when to strike one. They yes. know how far they're going to push it. They know what they already know. In that one other article, that person that was the anonymous person, same thing said. They know what their, their floor is. 
they just aren't saying anything to keep people striking because they want you to be hungry. So by the time that they they finally are going to say they're going to relent, you're going to agree to it. Yeah. What is going to happen is they're going to these studios were already paring down. They're going to start shuttering productions completely like, hey, the show's been off the air or whatever. We're not even going to bother doing the season two because how long has it been? There are clauses and contracts, the uh, force majeure clause that they mm-hmm. can basically shut it down. And that's not what they're banking on. Yeah, I think, honestly, I will tell you the truth. And you, you can quote me on this one. You can quote me on this one because this is God's honest truth. I think what's going on here is they they knew this was going to happen. They knew they needed to cut back on the number of writers that they had employed and the number of shows that they're producing. They let the strike happen so they could just be like, oh, yeah, well, this is a real shame. We got to cancel this. We got to cancel that. We got to cancel this. When they get to a place where they think they're comfortable, that they've got enough you know, basically they whittled it down to a manageable level. I think the writers and the shows that are left, I think they will be left with better working conditions. This is how they get rid of the surplus employees and the surplus uh, streaming shows that nobody was really watching anyway. And they do it without, I mean, they're still going to look like dicks, but it's not going to be as bad as like, yeah, we're just going to cancel this show and fire this person, right. fire that person, fire this person. Kickstarter did the same thing. They got rid of the union that was causing them problems because they wanted to control the production. Right. You know? And that isn't saying that's the right thing I'm to do. I'm not saying it's right. What I'm we're saying, saying that's what saying is doing. that's what they're going to do. Absolutely. And that's what's being misconstrued. Saying something, not saying that this is what's going to happen is not the same thing as saying, oh, well, they're in the right for doing so. It's and- not an endorsement. I'm just saying, as somebody who's been in business for a long time and who's been around the block, this is what they're probably looking at. You have to explain economics Because people. you're explaining to children that, well, that have never, children. never worked in the... Situation. Real world? The real world. They've. Oh my God, I have to work two jobs. Oh my like, God. Oh, you know, and I then, can't like, handle Mallory, my Starbucks shift. Mallory out there like, you know, you, the rest of you, it'll come for you at some point. It's like, it's been coming for us, but you've had your head up your ass in Hollywood. you like, people, the reason many people won't feel bad so bad for you is because th- there's this narrative and not from, not from writers in general. I think a lot of writers are pretty real people, but from yeah. these, these, these elitist ones that like, oh my God, the real world. You you know you don't understand how hard it is. We actually have to like you know finish our last job and and go work another job. Oh my god! That, I mean that just shows you what like I get a massage. Well, no, because I think I think that's kind of what's going on with a lot of these journos too. Is they think they basically go to the comic book article factory and that because they went to school for journalism and they did a gig here or whatever that they're owed a full time job. Irony. And, you did probably more in journalism and had higher gigs in journalism than they did, and you don't have a degree in it. <laughs> So, yeah. You had to work your way up to it. I did. I actually started out down a completely different career trajectory and fell into journalism. And I, and here we are. I wound up, yeah, I wound up being the managing editor of a pretty sizable newspaper because I understood. That's one of the ones you did. I understood the business side of it and I was brought in to turn that paper around, which I did. And I'm, Well, okay. So I did and the deal was I was supposed to get paid more. And I, yes, I remember this. So this is why I can relate. The deal was you hit these benchmarks. Yep. You turn this paper For around. one of the gigs. One of the gigs they had. Um, and that was a full-time gig. But mm-hmm. you hit these benchmarks and this is what we're going to pay you. We're going to raise you up to this. We're going to raise you up to that. And I did everything they told me to do. And then we got down to it and it was like, well, about that. Yeah, if you can just hang in there like another six months maybe. Oh, no. Then it became – it was because they wanted to hire their friend. Yeah. And turned, so you were brought yeah, in just to get yeah, cleaned up because their up. friend they wanted to hire who was a name. They wanted to hire their friend who had absolutely no idea how to fix the situation. They just knew how to sit there I, and throw I, their I, weight I, around. I was supposed to train this person to effectively take my job, which a person did. And I knew that was coming. So I just – so but anyway. The point is we're like, like, you don't know what it's like. Like, I oh, hell. exactly what We have like. worked. We have worked, you know – 20 hour days before we have done everything that you're complaining about. We have been there and done that. That being said. Yeah, we still, I mean, today I've got, okay, so we're doing YouTube stuff. Uh, I've got another probably six, seven hours at another job, another gig, another business I'm going to be doing later today. So mm-hmm. you're probably going to get geeky in the video or two by yourself. Um, lucky you. Lucky you. And it's probably going to be spicier than my takes, but that's what I'm saying. Like we hustle and these people don't understand it's just Hustling. funny to me. Like uh, a lot of them don't. Not not everybody. I'm just like you were gonna. We need to wrap this up. It's going way yeah. long. Yeah. Sorry, it's Saturday, so whatever. Yeah. This whole article, like from uh, Joshua over here, you know, it's just one giant, you know, double standard is what it is, and they're arguing about people like us making videos 
uh, based on the strike, while they themselves are doing the exact same thing. They're just know, doing right. it in written form. Yeah, yeah. And because, you know, and I think a lot of, if you listen to a lot of other people, like I've been listening to some of the people off and on, I don't really listen to a lot of YouTubers because I don't have time. It's not because I don't, you know, it's a time issue. But when I've caught bits and pieces of what they're saying, they're saying the same things we're saying, which is, yes, the residuals are a big problem. They've it, been for it's years. It's a huge problem. Those, right? who, have, yeah. those who, who deserve it should definitely get paid more, should get bonuses. Um, there should be, you know, some of these things that they're asking for, a lot of it, the AI thing is a big problem. You know, a lot of us agree. The problem where you where you lose us is the idea that they should just get a mandated amount of writers so they can all stay employed when the market isn't big enough to sustain them. And there's a lot of writers out there who totally tanked the studios and done really shitty projects. And it's the studio's fault too because they greenlit, greenlit such shitty yeah, projects. Yeah. There's a lot of – and they're, they're tossing executives overboard too. It's not right. just the, the writers. But beyond that even – like my thing being the uh, individualist I am is if you're not getting the deal that you want, get a better agent. Negotiate for we, better. As somebody who's had agents, but we yeah, we don't understand anything about Hollywood. So my my thing is, you know, and again, that's kind of the, the double-edged sword of the union is everybody. It's basically an all or nothing. Like we all have to get this or nobody gets it. And I'm like, well, what if 20 of you are worth getting it, but the other 4,000 of you aren't. I think well, it's those... the job of those 20 to stand up for them. No, it's not. That's not that, the way. No, I... that's, that's the, the idea. That's the mentality, but I'm sorry. That's not how And that's pointing not that realistic. out that's... makes you an anti. No. It's, it's not. It's just reality. There's a re... There's... You're saying... When you say anti, we say reality. Anyway, we're yeah. going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to have... Sorry it was long. Fundamental disagreements about the nature of We war just like to and... slap bitches every now and then, you know? Oh, you can't say oh, wait, that. Was, uh, metaphorically. Metaphorically, I think most people understood that was a joke, but some people have Yeah, some people don't ideas. understand that Pinkerton's means it could have a Hasbro. For fuck's sake. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.